let's talk about the infield. The Yankees have some vacancies right now. Uh, second base, Glaber Torres is a free agent, or he will be tomorrow at 5 p.m. And Rizzo, going to be a free agent. The Yankees have declined his option. Gary Phillips of the New York Daily News, who was on the show recently, uh, talked about how it's not out of the realm of possibility for the Yankees to re-sign Rizzo on a cheap contract, but I say the time has come. The dude doesn't have any power anymore. It's a power position. And quite frankly, his defense is a little bit overrated in recent years. And there's two problems if you replace him with getting one of the two big free agent bats, Christian Walker or Pete Alonso. And those problems are that they're both right-handed. And ideally, you'd like to replace a lefty bat with a lefty bat. Otherwise, you start to become too right-handed, like the Yankees were back in, uh, well, the last 10 years before, <laughs> you know, before this year. The other problem is that both of those contracts would eat into the Juan Soto fund. And I, I truly believe the Yankees are going to make an enormous offer to Juan Soto. And I, I think he would be inclined to, to take it. There's the value of sp- uh, sponsorship and endorsement off the field, which, you know, the Yankee brand carries a lot more weight uh, than, say, the Mets or, you know, one of the teams, the Giants or whatever. The Dodgers have already said they're not interested. Um, that was a rumor that they were, and then Jeff Passan shot it down. So I really think it's going to come down to Yankees, Mets, Giants. And the Yankees have the strongest brand of any of those teams, even though the Giants have won more World Series in recent years. But anyway, uh, we'll talk about all, you know, the Juan Soto stuff. But uh, Ben Rice... Had a good year at first base uh, in AAA, hit 294, showed some power, got called up to the major leagues, hit three home runs in one game, made me shave my head. I think he'll improve offensively and defensively at first base. You give him a full winter to work on it. You give him a full spring training to get comfortable over there. I think that's the way the Yankees will go. My only other thought on first base, and I've seen a lot of people suggest this, and I've suggested it a few times myself, is that Aaron Judge could make an amazing target to throw at over there at first base. There's been talk about him going there one day. He's a big guy, humongous wingspan. Nobody's going to want to run full speed into him. But, you know, will is he going to be flexible enough? You know, we'll see. Uh, you've also got Oswaldo Cabrera and John Birdie. Uh, both played a little bit of first base during the postseason, but I, I don't think the Yankees are committed to either one of those guys long-term at first base. First of all, Oswaldo Cabrera, they like to move around all over the place, so I, I think they view him more as their you know, cheap but effective utility guy. And then John Birdie got injured three times this year. He had three lower body injuries. You just can't count, him, count on him playing every day. I don't know how much you can count on him at all, uh, quite frankly. I don't think they're going to bring back Glaber Torres to play second base, even though he swung the bat better uh, once he got moved to the leadoff spot. He's still just not a good enough defender, led the league in errors, not a good base runner. The Yankees got to get better there. Also, he probably eats into the Juan Soto fund without moving the needle from where we were this year because of the base running and because of the defense. So I contend Yankees can get better defensively at second base by just simply shifting Jazz Chisholm back to his natural position and stopping the third base experiment, which he's got a great arm. I get it, but you really got to have a a real defender over there. Alex Bregman is a free agent, 30 years old, pretty much a guaranteed 25 home run guy in Houston. He doesn't hit the ball uh, the opposite way very much, so that could hurt him at Yankee Stadium. 272 career hitter. He's been around 260 in recent years. I think he's going to be expensive, but I don't think he's going to be $30 million a year expensive. I think you can get him for 25 or less, you know? Uh, I think you can plug him right in there at third base and it makes you better defensively at two spots because he fixes the third base problem and it allows you to fix the second base problem with Jazz. So right there, your defense around the horn is better with the exception of first base with Ben Rice, who's still a novice, but he could get better. Gio Urshela also an option at third base, but he fell way off this year, way off. Uh, He only had a... 286 on base percentage, 647 OPS, and that's a trend. So he's dropped off three years in a row in OPS. So as much as we love his defense, as much as we love his smile, uh, I'm passing on Gio Urshela. You could also try and tring, swing at trade, somebody like Key Brian Hayes from the Pirates or you know maybe Jake Berger from Miami, but 
third base is not a spot where you want to shop in the bargain bin. You want to you want a real player there. So when we get to the blueprint, I'll give you my thoughts on who I would go with. Uh, let's talk about the arms race. This was a clip from a recent podcast. If you enjoyed it, go ahead and check out the full episode. Full game over. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and give us a subscribe. It helps other Yankees fans find the channel. We're also on all your favorite podcast platforms and social media. Join the community. Have some fun. We're here after every game. This is Pinstripe Territory.